friends, welcome back. And if you're new, welcome. My name is Nikki, and today I'm doing something totally different here on my channel. I don't think I've ever done a story time video. You guys know I tell you crazy stories usually at the end of my videos when I'm doing product reviews, but this video is going to be a date story time. So where I got this idea, I was watching um, one of my YouTube, one of my YouTubers. I act like people that I watch are my friends. I was watching Kate. I think her name is Kate or Katie, Katie Snooks. I'll leave a channel, uh, a link to her channel down below. She does videos where she does story times and it's called Dates with Kate. I think that's what her name is. Anyways, I should know her name. I've been watching her for years. So I was watching her video and I was like, this is such a great idea. I have so many dating nightmare horror stories that would be funny videos. If one of you laughs, then I feel like me embarrassing myself on the internet was worth it. So. That's what I'm gonna do. If you guys like it, I'll keep doing it. I'll give you more stories. I've been dating for a long time, so I've got a lot of stories. So let me know in the comments down below if this is something you like, if you don't like. We're gonna jump into it. Of course, I'm gonna use a fake name. This was so long ago, honestly, I don't even think I remember his name, but we will call him John. So I should mention that when I was very, very young, I did a lot of very dumb things. So a lot of things that I do that I'm gonna mention that I've done, you're gonna be like screaming like, Nikki, why did you do that? But whatever. Okay, so many, many, many years ago, I met John online. I think we met on like match.com, I think. I cannot remember, but I know we met online. We met in person, he looked nothing like his photos, but he was very, very, very nice. It was him in the photos, but it looked like he had taken those photos when he was like 16 on the football team, working out six days a week, and then in person, he just didn't look like the photo. Like you could just tell the photos were a long time ago, but he was so nice. We had, I think we dated for like a month, never did anything physical. We didn't even kiss because I wasn't really physically attracted to him, but he was so nice that I was like, I have to keep dating this guy. He's so sweet. He opens the door for me, blah, blah, blah. He's just a really kind, awesome guy. He was an engineer. I can't remember his name, but I remember all of this other stuff. He was an engineer. He was working on his PhD, you know, very goal oriented. Um, he was taking care of his mom. He had bought a house and she like lived in the guest house. It, he was just like a really nice guy. I was like, okay, maybe the physical attraction, because that's how I am. I'm like, I didn't used to be like that. Back then I was actually really superficial. But I thought, you know, okay, let's be real because before him I had had some real dating horror stories. I was like, let's try to date a normal guy because I was always looking for the guys with the big arms, the gorgeous face. I was like, he's a nice, nice guy. Let's just try to date him and maybe I'll grow to like him and grow to be physically attracted to him. So after like a month and a half, this is gonna get funny. Well, it's funny to me. You guys let me know in the comments down below what you think. So after about a month and a half, I never kissed him because I wasn't attracted to him physically yet. So he kept asking, you know, do you wanna come over to my place? I have a pool, I have this. I'm like, oh God, if I go over his place, he's probably gonna wanna like kiss or something. So I was like, you know what? Why don't I have him come to my turf? And I never, would do that unless I was very serious about a guy. My home is like my haven. So I would never just have random guys over my house. That was a rule that I had back then and I still have and I always tell my friends that like if you're dating, make sure you really like the guy before you show him your home because I've had some like stalkers, some, it's just crazy. I told you I have a lot of stories. So I was like, he's really nice, he's normal, he's sane. Why don't I just have him over my place? So I feel like, you know, if he tries to make the move on me, I'll feel more comfortable rejecting him if I want to. So my place that he visited was the worst apartment I have ever had in my life. I'm not gonna tell you the area it was in. It was in Los Angeles. It was a very, very cheap apartment. I mean, I think my rent was $750 for a studio. In Los Angeles, that's unheard of. I'm pretty sure it's a lot more expensive now, but back then it was like 750 bucks, and <laughs> I had the biggest, most disgusting cockroaches ever in my, I've ever seen in my entire life. I'll put like clips, I'll show you, I don't even know what they're called, like they were huge. When I first moved into this place, they weren't there. Like the first three months, I didn't have anything. No mice, no spiders, nothing. 
I didn't, I never had mice in this place, but these roaches, I don't know where the, well, I ended up getting an exterminator and he told me that there were nests under the building. So he was like, I can exterminate, but they're gonna keep coming. Friends, when I tell you they were huge, they were like the size of my Shih Tzu. It was not that big, but they were like literally this big. I think they're called water bugs, but it was like water bugs on steroids. It was the worst year of my life and they were able to fly. They were able to fly, friends. They would like be on my Ikea dresser and then just fly over to my bed. Oh my God, it was so horrible. Poor Coco, when I, oh, here he comes, he hears me screaming. So he's like, mommy, are you okay? Do you remember that horrible year with all those roaches, Coco? He just got groomed, so. He looks like, I hate when he gets groomed because this is what he looks like. I like Shih Tzus to be hairy, so I feel like he looks like a rat, but he's so sweet. Anytime he hears me scream, he comes over. Do you remember that time we lived with those giant roaches that you didn't want to talk to? So it was so funny because like when I would see the roaches, this is becoming a story about roaches, but I'll move on. I'll connect how this relates to the guy. When I would see the roaches, I'd be like, go, go, eat it, eat it. He's such like a fluffy lap dog. He looked at me like, bitch, are you crazy? He would literally look at them, back away, and just go in his crate like you are out of your god dang mind. So it was horrible. I paid an exterminator to come once a month, and that would keep them away for like a week, and then the other three weeks, of the month, I would just be in hell. I could not, I tried to break my lease and the landlady would not let me break it. As soon as my year lease was up, I was out of there so fast. It was horrible. Okay, so that's my place. I live in fear of these flying cockroaches. Some days you don't see them and then other days, one time I woke up with one in my hair, horrible. He comes over, I'm like, okay, yeah, cool, come over, I'll cook for you, whatever. Remember, he has a nice house, he has a guest house, he has a pool, great place. He comes over, I'm not gonna say what, where the neighborhood was, because I don't wanna offend anyone. Some people may still, that are watching, may live there. The neighborhood wasn't that horrible, but my place was horrible. So he comes over, and he, the first thing he says when he parks, he's like, is my car gonna be safe here? Because as he parked, there were helicopters flying around looking for something. So I was like, yeah, I think so. I think your car will be safe. Before we would even eat dinner, he called his insurance company and lowered his premium in case anything happened. That is not a joke. He sat on the phone for 20 minutes. I was like, yeah, I'm in a little bit of a sketch neighborhood. These were his exact words. I'm in a sketch neighborhood. I was just wondering if I could lower my premium from 500 to $100 just in case. I was like, okay, whatever. And I think I heard him say like, just in case I stay the night here. And I'm thinking, you are not staying the night here. Don't get ahead of yourself, buddy. The roaches make an appearance, friends. They're not even roaches. They're like mini rats. So uh, the living, living room, I say living room in quotes because it's a studio. The living room is like where I'm sitting. And then you can see where the bed area is and the dresser. So for some reason, those little roaches like to fly from my dresser. They crawl up the back of the dresser. They get on top of there. We're sitting there watching TV. I'm not kidding, the most I have ever seen. There were four in a row that went flying from my dresser to the bed. Oh my God. Just thinking of the memory just makes me like wanna rip my wig off and just scratch everywhere. It was the most disgusting thing. I've seen like one at a time, right? I've never seen four. It was like one went whoo, flying over, two. It was like I was in a circus. I literally started screaming like a little baby. And he was sitting there like in disbelief, like we're both just watching them like fly over, fly over. I'm screaming like, oh my God, oh my God. Coco runs over to me. He gets up. And he just like calmly, you know, he's a big guy. He was like six foot two, gets up calmly, knocks them off the bed, steps on them, and green, oh my God, it was horrible. Green pus went flying everywhere. I'm not exaggerating when I tell you these things were this big. They were the biggest, most disgusting things I have ever seen in my life. Oh my God. So. He proceeds to step on all four of them. This green, nasty, neon crap goes everywhere. Remember, we had just finished having sushi and I made, I made like sushi and something else. I got so freaked out that I vomited immediately all over my couch. So he's 
standing in like this dead roach goo between my bed and my dresser. Coco's looking at him like, what the hell's going on? And I'm just like projectile vomiting all over my couch. <laughs> and he was just, we literally, after I was done, I ran to the bathroom, like cleaned myself up. He's literally still just standing by the roaches like, what? the hell is going on why does this girl have some freak show of roaches in her house she just vomited he literally stood there for like 10 minutes and then finally he spoke i was like you know sorry i have an exterminator but i i was after i finally vomited i'm sorry if any if that triggers any of you after i was done with all that cleaning everything up he literally wasn't saying anything and I was like, you know, I'm sorry about that. I try to get an exterminator to come here. I'm waiting for my lease to get up. I try to break the lease. He sits down with me on the couch where I'd just been sick. And he's like, you know, this was a very, very big turnoff for me. He says that very serious like this. This was a really big turnoff for me. So unless you want to maybe move in with me or get a new place and I can help you out with the rent, I'm not going to be able to see you anymore. <laughs> And I'm thinking, literally, in my head, I'm laughing, like, what a jerk. Like, first of all, I'm not even physically attracted to you anyways. Second of all, that's your response to all this. I would be more understanding if he was just like, you know, this is gross. Oh, my goodness. But, or just tried to be nice about it and play it off. Like, can you try to be a little bit compassionate? I just freaking freaked out. I was, like, crying, laughing, vomiting, scared. So I was just like, that was me for like two minutes, literally like, what? So I was like, all right, well, thank you for killing the roaches. You can go now. I hope you have a great life. That's literally what I said. <laughs> was such a biatch. But that's what I said because I was just like, I felt like that was the worst response he could give. Like, you could have just played it off, buddy, and been like, oh, it's okay, don't worry about it, even if it grossed you the hell out. I just thought, okay, this is not the guy for me. When I'm freaking out, I'm getting sick, I'm freaking out, like you want someone that's gonna be calm or make a joke. Usually I need someone to make a joke at that time so I can just relax, but for, I just felt like it was like a really pompous, jerky thing to say. And so he was like, really? I thought, you know, this is not a joke, friends. He thought, he said to me, I thought you would be like the mother of my kids. I thought maybe we have a really good future. You're really ambitious. You're really educated. A girl like you shouldn't be living in a place like this. That was my face again, just like. And I was like, okay, take care, have a good life again and I'm like literally opening the door at this point and he's like well whatever it's your loss and he left and I never saw him again isn't that like first of all the roaches were horrible the whole scenario was a mess I wasn't even attracted to him and I thought he was such a nice great sweet guy but then like this pompous jerky side just came out and I'm actually I'm so honestly glad that that happened because it just showed me who he really is you know and we just would not work together. I'm just too laid back. I'm silly. I'm down to earth. Sometimes I freak out and sometimes I get sick and I don't want someone that's going to be like a pompous jerk. So that was it. I never saw him again, friends. That was my date. After a month of dating him, having really nice dates, thinking he's such a great guy, he ended up, ended up being like a pompous jerk. I think he was pompous. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. His whole reaction was just like, First of all, you saw us having kids and getting married. We had never even kissed, nothing physical. I mean, you don't have to have physical, but like, I did not feel that at all. I didn't feel any chemistry, really. I just kept thinking he was such a sweet guy. It turns out he wasn't. So as gross as that was, as horrible as it was, I'm glad it happened because it just showed me his true colors. And, and to end the story in the apartment, the day I could get out of there, I got out of there so freaking fast. It was the worst experience of my life. Other stories have happened. I have a whole bunch of other stories just about that apartment. If you guys would like to hear the horror stories of living in that apartment in Los Angeles, let me know in the comments down below because I have some horror stories from that place. Crazy. All right, if you guys wanna see or hear some more Nikki nightmare dates, 
let me know because I got a lot. Let's jump into product reviews. Okay, first up, I have these eyelashes. Let's go with these first. These are the Eyelore Opulent. Are these faux mink? Mink effect lashes. I showed you guys these. Um, what video was it? It was the video where I used the CoverGirl foundation. I actually put these on and showed you what they look like. They're very lightweight, very natural feeling. I really like them. They're really long, but they're not super dense. So these are good to wear if you want long lashes, but you don't want like full on thick, thick faux lashes. This is actually my second pair. I really like these. You can pick them up at Ulta or I'll leave a link to them down below. Next up, I actually have this highlight. I only put it on my nose today. Um, this is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Chocolate Geode. You guys know I love this. Look at how gorgeous this is. I own every single, I think I own almost every single Shimmering Skin Perfector. I told you I have Opal, Topaz, the Amethyst one, uh, Champagne Pop. I love these. They're long wearing. They're gorgeous. They're just awesome. I feel like everybody knows that. They're just like a staple. And I'm glad to add this one to my collection. I have it on the bridge of my nose right now. Um, it's kind of wearing off because I'm getting a little bit oily. Next up from Clarins, we have their Sun Kissed collection. This is another product that I showed you in that video where I tried that CoverGirl foundation. I can't remember what the name of that video is. It wasn't my work tutorial. What was that video called? Let me see. There was a video where I tried this on and I showed it to you guys. Was it... I know it wasn't a makeup tutorial because you guys know, although you guys did tell me that you do want to see more makeup tutorials, so I should try to incorporate those in. Once it comes up, my computer, so I'll show you. But I've been using the SOS Primer, um, and this one is 07 Mocha. This is great. It smoothed out my pores. I showed you guys in that video, smoothed out my pores, made my skin like a little bit more matte, but not super matte, and I feel like it gave me some coverage too. I really like this. And then this is the... Bronzing Compact in Solel, 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 I'll leave a link to it down below. I'm not pronouncing it properly. This compact is huge, friends. Look at how big that is. It's too light for me to bronze, so I've just been kind of using it as a setting powder, but I really like it, and I love the packaging. So thanks to Clarence for sending me that. Next up, we have the Kevin Aquan. Um, this is the Kevin Aquan, my computer. I wanted to tell you the video, but my computer's being slow. Maybe I can pull it up on my phone. This is the, hang on, let me pull it up. It's gonna bug me. Ah, it was the full face using affordable brushes. So the brushes that I got from Big Lots is when I showed you this primer and um, the Shimmering Skin Perfector. I'm sorry, I can't think straight. That whole date story threw me off. I haven't told that story in a long time. This is the Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powder in Light. As you can tell, that is way too light for me to sculpt anything. So I've been using it to set under my eyes and I have been loving it. It helps to keep my concealer uh, on my face, stay put, limited creasing, so that's good. Next up from uh, First Aid Beauty, we have their Ultra Repair Hydrating Serum. It says, replenish smooth and soften skin. Safe for sensitive skin. You guys know I really like First Aid Beauty. I've been using their um, salicylic acid clay face wash a lot. So this one has a pump. Let me show you what it looks like. It's clear. Does it have a smell? No smell. Ooh, this feels cooling. It's very lightweight. So I guess you put this on before your moisturizer. It says use daily in the AM and PM. Apply one pump of the product to clean, dry face and neck. Wait until completely absorbed and then apply serum. It doesn't have a smell either. I like when skincare doesn't have a smell. So I will give this a try and let you guys know how it goes. If any of you have tried this, let me know your thoughts down below. Uh, what else? Oh, Derma E sent me some goodies. I think I already have these actually. This is the Derma E Purifying Daily Detox uh, activated charcoal scrub, which is really good. If you have oily skin, you want to get like some impurities out of your skin. And then also the Derma E purifying charcoal mask. Again, really good when my skin is like really oily. I have large pores and I want to get all the gunk out. Um, next up, I have some mascaras, but I didn't actually use these. My mom did. My mom has the most beautiful, gorgeous, natural lashes. I know you're watching, Mom. You know I love your lashes. Um, I don't think my mom has ever worn fake eyelashes a day in her life, so I always give her mascaras to try out because she's the mascara 
queen. She like, her lashes are already really long, but then she knows how to really work mascara to just bring them out. I love her lashes. So mom tried out four of these. She said the blink mascara was super whack. I didn't do anything for her. This is my mom's words. She didn't say it was whack, but she said it wasn't good. I also gave her the butter London double decker lashes. She said that the brush was really thick, so she couldn't get her lower lash line and she loves to do her lower lashes. Um, the Tarte Tartist Mascara, she said also the brush is so big, it makes it difficult to get the lower lash line. Didn't bring out her um, upper lashes. Her favorite was the Julep Length Matters Buildable Lengthening Mascara. I'll leave a link to it down below. She said the wand was super long and it made it easy to do the top and bottom lashes. It made them very long and made them very thick. She loved this mascara, so tip from uh, my mama to you julep length matters mascara is a really good one so that is it for me this video is going to be so long hopefully you enjoyed the story time i can get like really graphic i have some graphic like funny stories if you want more nikki nightmare dates i don't know what i'm gonna call this like nikki nights nikki nightmare dates Give me some ideas. But if you want to hear more story time videos, let me know in the comments down below. That is it for me. Check out the videos on the screen. If you haven't subscribed, don't forget to subscribe. I have a giveaway happening right now. You can check that out. I'll leave a link to it down below. I just spit all over myself. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you soon. Ciao.